Thank you, Sudhi. Today is also a day to wonder how does a country of India's size and diversity with 22 languages and God knows how many dialects, at least four major religions, how has all this held together for so many years? Our Western neighbor chose to be an Islamic state and broke up within 24 years of independence. India chose the tougher option, a secular democracy. While many had written India off in the few years after partition, we have not just survived, but boomed as an emerging global giant. At midnight on August 15, 1947, the world witnessed the start of a historically unique experiment. The Indian state has been an attempt to harmonize staggering regional, linguistic, ethnic, religious and cultural diversity with the European nation-state model. The cornerstone of that experiment is the Indian constitution, adopted on January 26, 1950. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. It is a living document that forms the basic DNA of the imagined community that is the modern Indian nation. Apart from being the longest constitution anywhere in the world, there is one crucial factor that distinguishes the Indian constitution from others. It not only lays down the basic legal and governance principles of a representative democracy, but is also a document that envisages social change. It is this nature of the constitution that led to concepts like freedom, justice and equality, finding teeth in laws that allowed universal suffrage for women, abolished zamindari and made untouchability illegal. Each of these were measures that prioritized the goal of building a just and egalitarian society above individual rights and cultural norms. But equality isn't homogeneity, and the Indian constitution does well to recognize that. For instance, the eighth schedule recognizes 22 different languages. Articles are enshrined for the welfare of tribes and classes that have been historically wronged. Along with that, specific provisions allow space for minorities to grow while preserving their identity. Ensuring a united identity while respecting diversity and individual rights is the balance that India's founding fathers sought to strike. The goal was to provide space for multiple sub-nationalisms to coexist, to create a composite Indian national identity. Something that finds resonance today in the Indian armed forces or even the country's cricket team. Despite that, or perhaps because of this very nature of the constitution, identity and frictions associated with it have grown to become among the defining features of India's political landscape. Linguistic, regional, communal, caste and ethnic polarizations are a feature of Indian electoral campaigns. Moreover, identity continues to play a crucial role in long-running conflicts from the Naga insurgency in the east to the state of Jammu and Kashmir in the north. It is this fundamental conflict which emanates from the constitution that was echoed in a recent Supreme Court ruling barring electoral campaigns based on identity politics. The 4-3 ruling saw the dissenting judges argue against terming these subjects as constitutionally protected free speech. So what is it that binds this nation of over 1.2 billion people together? The answer lies within the constitution and the common sense of identity that has been constructed based on its framework. It is this along with the representative nature of the Indian system that allows a diverse group of people to come together and identify themselves as Indians. In New Delhi, Manoj Keval Ramani, we on.